so just kind of as people file in here, um, I just want to name what a honor it is to be here with you all sharing this information. And it's one of my favorite topics um, in my clinical practice. This is probably something that folks are coming to me the most for. Um, I'm just finding again and again that folks are really looking for some support with stress levels, um, depression, anxiety, um, yeah, just all the really intense feelings that seem to be pretty present right now. And there are so many plants that are very supportive for this. So yeah, we're in a moment, we'll get into the presentation. Um, we're gonna get through as many plants as we can today, but there's gonna be many that we won't have a chance to get to. But then again, um, at the end of the presentation, you will get a copy of the presentation and then you can just go back on your own and you know, dive into the plants um, in your own time. So with that, I think I will share my screen here. Oh, and there's uh, one thing I also wanted to mention as far as the questions go. So as we get going and, you know, something pops up for you and you have a question, go ahead and, you know, send it in the chat to everybody. But if it's something that feels a little uh, more personal and you're, you're not really comfortable with sharing it with everyone, um, that's totally fine. And you can go ahead and send that to me privately. And at the end, um, I'll make sure to, you know, either get your email and we can kind of dialogue about it later, um, or I'll try to address um, your question privately at the end through the chat. Okay, so here we are, nourishing the nervous system, herbs for stress and anxiety. I thought it would be nice, uh, before we get going, if we could all just take a minute to arrive together and just calm our nervous systems down with a little um, deep breathing together. So if you feel comfortable, um, if you could get your feet on the ground and really just feel the support of the floor. Um, if your feet are on the floor, that's fine. Just get cozy in your chair the best you can. And if you feel comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. Maybe put your hand on your heart, maybe one hand on your belly. And let's go ahead and just do three really, really deep breaths in through our nose and out through our mouths. Beautiful. So, before we talk about any of the plants, um, it's actually really important for us to really zoom out and think about lifestyle and the pieces that we really need to have in place to make sure that our nervous systems are set up to work the best that they can. So the first piece that we need to think about is sleep. So when we sleep, we're actually in the parasympathetic state. And this is the time that our nervous systems tell us that we're safe, um, we can rest and digest, we can repair ourselves. Um, it's just a very restorative time for our body. And when we're not getting quality sleep, virtually every system in the body begins to have challenges. So there's plants that we're gonna talk about today that can support sleep, but really the best thing you can do is focus on all of these other uh, pillars here. And if all of these pieces are you know, in place the best that they can be, 
that's truly going to be the most optimal thing that you can do for your sleep. Okay, so the next piece here, of course, is going to be stress management. So our bodies are designed to handle short term stressful situations. So our nervous system is basically a sensory machine, just gathering information through sensory receptors and then deciding if it's time to slip into our sympathetic, which is our fight or flight response, or if it's safe to be in our rest and digest or parasympathetic response. So one of the really classic examples um, of how this works uh, comes from a book, I believe it's called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, um, but I'll have to <laughs> double check at the end of our presentation about that. But it's basically this example of, um, you know, going back to like the beginning of time, um, beginning of humans in this world. And it's having you picture yourself as if you are out in the desert, you know, gathering food, something like that. And you're suddenly perceived that there's a tiger close by. So what happens is your immune system shuts down your digestive system shuts down, your reproductive system shuts down, and then your cardiovascular system really steps it up, pulling blood away from non-essential organs and then rushing that blood to your extremities so you can actually have the energy to run or fight. So this would be super helpful if you were actually fighting a tiger but the problem is our nervous systems have not really adapted to the modern world. So the amount of tigers that are coming at us may have declined. <laughs> it's probably something none of us will ever really experience. But the amount of this constant everyday stress that we experience has infinitely multiplied. And our bodies can't really tell the difference between tiny everyday stress or an actual tiger that's running at us. So every plant that we talk about today is going to be useful for getting us out of that fight or flight state and getting us into the parasympathetic response. And I really hope this list uh, doesn't stress you out further, um, but I just wanted to show you some examples of like the everyday modern day tigers that are coming at us constantly. And I hope this list more than anything just gives you some compassion for your sweet little nervous system. And I'm hoping that it will inspire you to not only call on the many plants that we're going to be talking about today, but really call on any other stress reducing techniques. Um, that you might already know about. So maybe meditation or taking a bath, um, going for a walk, singing in the car, deep breathing like we just did. Um, all of those things are going to be really, really helpful for just getting you into that parasympathetic state. And one of these I just want to uh, mention is alarm clocks. <laughs> that might seem like kind of a silly one, but um, honestly, if you are a person that has an alarm that's set where when you wake up, you're waking up to like a really loud, annoying sound. Um, that immediately puts you into the sympathetic response. So you're immediately kind of waking up, um, not, not setting your day out to have like a very calm, relaxed day. So if it's possible, if that is you, maybe switching to like a softer alarm um, or just finding ways where you, you can wake up a little softer than that like intense beeping noise. <laughs> um, okay, so that's that. And going back to these pillars. Um, okay, so the next one we wanna talk about is sunlight or vitamin D. So getting outside for natural sunlight or supplementing with vitamin D is a really wonderful support for the nervous system. And there's also some really beautiful um, sun-bearing plants like St. John's wort or chamomile 
um, these plants truly bring in the warming light of the sun into your body, which can be very, very supportive um, if you're experiencing depression or just kind of feelings of like weightedness. Um, however, those are just the, the ways you can energetically receive that sun medicine. Um, and it's not quite giving you that actual vitamin D that you need. So again, just getting outside, getting that natural sunlight or um, supplementing with vitamin D is a really important thing you can do. And, you know, next time you're at the doctor, um, if you, you were curious, you could have them check, you know, what are my vitamin D levels? And you might be surprised to see that you are vitamin D deficient and just um, supplementing um, with, you know, vitamins or like really leafy, leafy greens um, that can really turn things around um, if that's balanced for you. Okay, so the next important piece is going to be hydration. So ideally, everyone should be drinking half of their body weight in ounces each day. So I'll say that again, every day, um, however much you weigh, you should be drinking half of that in ounces. And virtually every single human is not doing this <laughs> and is chronically dehydrated. And just fixing this one little piece is gonna help fatigue levels, uh, inflammation in the body, depression, anxiety, insomnia, and so much more. So it's really, you know, if you were gonna work on one thing out of all of these pillars, um, I would probably choose hydration as your, your window in um, to rebalancing. Okay, and the next piece is going to be uh, exercise or moving the body. So this can look like uh, stretching, yoga, dancing, cardio, um, or just taking a walk outside. Um, you know, you could even, I know it's getting a bit colder out these days um, for those of us on the East Coast. So if you, you know, bundle up and just take a walk for five minutes, you know, time it on your phone and then go out five minutes and then come back five minutes. Just doing that every day, um, three times a day if you could would be amazing, but even once um, is going to have a really uh, supportive, um, going to be very supportive for your nervous system. And the next piece is diet. So this piece is very important. Most of us are experiencing levels of systemic inflammation because of our diet. And this just means that our diet is so acidic that it's causing inflammation in the body. And our diet is acidic when we're eating excess sugar, processed foods, too much caffeine, etc. So this is a really important one to think about because when our bodies are inflamed, we get stuck in a cycle of producing too much cortisol and other stress hormones. And then this then messes up our nutrient absorption, our GI function, our sleep, our ability to clear out toxins in the body, and so much more. And then all of this then increases inflammation in the body, which then increases that cortisol and other stress hormones. So then we get locked into this forever loop of really not feeling our best. So when we think about deeply, deeply nourishing the nervous system, we really need to think about decreasing inflammation in the body. And one giant step towards this is changing our diet um, to an anti-inflammatory diet. Uh, one great example of this would be the Whole30 diet. So this is a really popular, um, really popular diet. There's tons of information about it on the internet. You know, you could just Google Whole30 recipes and you would see so many recipes. Um, you don't, you know, have to subscribe to anything. You don't have to pay anyone any money. There's just tons of information out there and it's all for free. And it's just, um, 
basically guiding you towards reaching for whole foods. So, you know, staying away from processed foods as much as you can, reaching for um, foods as close to their original form as possible. So, you know, a carrot <laughs> or an apple or whatever. Um, but just, you know, those healthy greens, um, healthy grains, um, if you're going to eat meat, organic meat, um, yeah, and just, you know, focusing on trying to get every color of the rainbow into your diet. So when you're reaching for vegetables, trying to mix it up with green things, red things, orange things, yellow things. Um, yeah, that's essentially the Whole30 diet. So those were the pillars of health. And now I want to talk about um, the plant actions that are going to be indicated for the nervous system. So these are all, every plant is going to have a multiple of actions um, that it has on the body. And these are all the ones that are specifically indicated for the nervous system. Nervines are going to be the general category of plants that include any plant that supports the nervous system. And then under this nervine umbrella, we, we kind of have everything else. So first we have nervine stimulants, and these are gonna be plants that um, stimulate the nervous system. So this is gonna be indicated um, for you if you're a person, when you get stressed out, if you're leaning more towards depression, um, if you're leaning more towards brain fog, or just levels of fatigue that just feel really unreasonable and overwhelming. Um, a nerving stimulant would be a wonderful plant to reach for. Now, nerving relaxants or sedatives are going to be plants that are indicated um, more for anxiety. So if you're using words like, um, fr you know, I feel fried or I feel frazzled, um, things like that, um, a nerving relaxant is going to be really wonderful for you just to kind of calm everything down. Um, yeah. And then nerving tonics or tropho restoratives. So these are going to be plants that feed and generally tonify the nervous system. So these are plants that are great for um, that deep burnout that comes from chronic stress and depletion after, um, yeah, just being stressed out for a really long time or um, after maybe chronic drug and alcohol use, something like that, um, where you really just need to feed and rebuild um, your actual nerves. Um, nerving tonics are gonna be really wonderful for you for that. And hypnotic nervines. So these are gonna be herbs that just um, support the body, ease into sleep. And then we have adaptogens. So these are really beautiful, really beautiful class of plants um, that just basically support the body deal with any kind of stress. So whether that's um, environmental stress, um, you know, maybe where you're working, you might be um, it, having to deal with like a lot of toxins or something like that. Um, or maybe there's mold in your house or something like that. Um, it's going to help your body adapt to those environmental toxins and then also um, emotional stress. So any, any, yeah, just everyday stress that you feel when you just feel overwhelmed or, you know, you just can't get all the things that you want to get done or, um, yeah, you're experiencing some hardships or, you know, going back to those list of modern day tigers, maybe there's like 15 or 20 of those <laughs> present in your day every day. Um, adaptogens are the plants that you're going to want to reach for to just help the body um, ease back into that homeostasis and um, just feel supported and able to deal with all the stress that's coming at you. Okay, antispasmodics are going to be really great um, if you're a person, when you get stressed out, if you kind of clench. Um, so if you, um, 
You may feel like tightness in your shoulders or your neck or your jaw. Um, maybe you have TMJ or um, suffer from migraines, something like that. Um, antispasmodics are gonna be really supportive for you. And then antidepressants, of course, are gonna be herbs that support the body, move through depression. And then analgesics. These are gonna be herbs that are specifically indicated to relieve pain, which is very, very important when we think about supporting the nervous system. Okay. So as you get to know um, many of the plants in these slides, I wanted to offer this model of um, a way to kind of dive deep and get to know whatever plant of, that you choose, like how to know that a little bit deeper. Um, so this is like a plant of the week, or you could do plant of the month model, something, you know, it's up to you how long you want to take with this. But it's basically just taking the time to get to know one plant at a time. Um, remembering one of my favorite phrases in herbal medicine is plants are people too. So kind of keeping that in your heart as you're getting to know, know these plants and yeah, just realizing that they all have these different personalities. They're all going to interact with your body in different ways. Um, they're going to respond to whatever's, you know, if your body is experiencing one thing one day and a different thing the next day, that plant is going to interact with you um, in a nuanced way. And yeah, there's many ways you can interact with the plants. These are just some suggestions. Um, but yeah, you know, making different medicine, um, making teas, um, if you know how making tinctures or oils, honeys. Um, so getting to experience different preparations is a great way to really dive deep. And then um, these more like energetic um, experiences are really important too. There's um, plants want to tell stories. They, they have so much to say <laughs> if we just tune in and um, give them the space and uh, the time to do that. So yeah, meditating with the plant, um, sleeping with a bit beneath your pillow. These are all really sweet ways to um, just see what, what medicine and what stories um, the plant wants to share with you specifically. Um, one really beautiful thing you can do while meditating with a plant. If this is a plant you really don't know much about, um, you're experiencing it for the first time. Um, so maybe making a cup of tea or something, um, having a few sips, sitting with that, meditating for maybe five or 10 minutes, and then drawing um, where in the body you felt the medicine of the plant moving through. You know, And oftentimes um, you'll find that wherever you felt it in the body is ex exactly, you know, what that plant is indicated for. You know, if you feel it moving to your belly, it might be a really great plant for your GI. Or if you feel it in your heart space, it might be a great plant for the cardiovascular system. So yeah, it's just a, a great way to get to know the plants and trust yourself as you're um, learning about these plants, because we know a lot more than we think we know. Okay, so your tea blends. Um, I forgot to kind of give everyone a cheers as we started, but I hope some of you are sipping on your tea. I know I am. I'll take a sip right now. Um, yummy. So yeah, this is the blend that many of you were able to pick up, and I know not everyone um, here today was able to pick up a blend, but I did try to um, pick plants that were very accessible and easy to access. So this could be a blend. Anyone that's watching that um, wasn't able to pick up a bag, um, you could make this on your own. Um, I pretty much did equal parts for every single plant, except I did two parts of oat straw and two parts of Tulsi. Uh, but everything else was equal parts. So yeah, I thought it would be fun if um, we could, you know, go through the first few 
plants in your blend and really explore those uh, just because you already have them and you're already developing a relationship with these plants. Um, so in a minute, we're going to go over Tulsi, lemon balm, oat straw, and chamomile. Um, but I did want to just quickly give a shout out to these four as well. Um, Rose is such a beautiful nervine. Um, it has an affinity for the heart. It's a really, really great one if you're carrying grief um, or yeah, just some grief in your heart that's causing it to kind of clench a little and maybe you even feel stress in your heart space. Uh, roses are a really great medicine for that. Um, rose hips, um, I kind of threw this in there on a whim, but I did like, I love when possible using all parts of the plant in a formula. So I did kind of like that the roses were already in there, but rose hips are very, very high in vitamin C, um, which feels important as we're entering in, in uh, cold and flu season. Um, ginger as well um, is just such a great one for the immune system. And, you know, something that's important to remember is that when our stress response is up, our immune system is down. Um, so that works the other way around as well. So when our immune system uh, is working uh, really great, then our stress response is going to be low, lower. So yeah, just adding a little immune support felt important. It, but both ginger and dandelion root, um, these are so beautiful to work with for stress and anxiety. Um, they're root medicine. So in general, when you can access um, root medicine in any form, that is going to just help ground you back into your body. Um, it's going to help support you to kind of feel at home in your body. Um, both of these also in, in different ways have the ability to um, support elimination centers in the body. And that's really important for the nervous system as well, because it just helps um, clear out like not only toxins, but also, you know, heavier emotions maybe. So um, dandelion root is really wonderful at supporting the liver, um, which is a space that it's going to help expel um, kind of those heavier feelings and anger, especially, um, but also, yeah, just any of those other stressful emotions, um, they're all going to go through the liver. So it's nice to get a little support there from dandelion. And yeah, I also wanted to mention, I don't think I wrote this on your tea bags, but you can definitely just make a cup of tea whenever you want, you know, every once a week or, you know, every few days or just when you think of it that, and that's going to be lovely and very supportive. But if you wanted to um, really engage with this tea blend on a medicinal level, um, if you were really wanting this to be your, your main nervous system support, I would have um, one cup three times a day. Okay. So let's talk about Tulsi. Um, so Tulsi is the first plant in your blend. And before we get into this slide, I just wanna um, give you a little heads up about what you're looking at here. Um, every slide, every plant that's in this presentation is gonna be set up in this exact way. So I just wanna kind of let you know what's going on. So up here, we have um, the common name. So this is gonna be, yeah, just the name that most people know. Most people, when you talk about Tulsi, they're, they're gonna picture this plant. Um, and then underneath the common name is the Latin name. So in the case of Tulsi, it's Oximum Sanctum. And we have the genus, that's Oximum. And then Sanctum is gonna be the species. And this is kind of like a last name, first name situation. And this is important. It's very important to learn. You know, you don't have to memorize them, but just to know the Latin name of um, whatever plant you're working with is really important because um, there could be many different um, species in a particular genus. 
it may not have the same medicinal um, benefits as the particular species that you're looking for. So um, yeah, just paying attention to that. Um, it's also important because different uh, regions of the country and different countries um, are gonna have different common names. And there's actually a few cases where um, there's one common name that's used um, for two different, um, very different medicinal plants. Um, so yeah, that's, it's just important to know if you're ordering herbs um, or just starting to work with them, grow them on your own, just, just check out that Latin just to make sure you know what you're working with. Okay, so this next little bit um, is gonna be the plants energetics. So this is all about um, what the plant does to the tissue states in the body. And as you can see, um, and actually for most of the plants we're gonna talk about today, um, the energetics of Tulsi are varied. Um, so there, it's gonna be cooling post-digestion and warming pre-digestion. And this is just a beautiful example of how um, nuanced and curious and um, truly profound plant medicine is. Um, unlike taking a pharmaceutical where that is gonna do the same thing every time to your body, no matter what. Um, plants, and Tulsi specifically, um, goes in there and, and figures out like what's going on right now you know does do you need me to kind of have a cooling effect on the tissue state or do you need me to have a warming effect um and you know that's going to be desired at different times for different reasons so yeah that's just an important piece to think about and then right here this is a list of all the plant actions so i'm sure you'll recognize a couple of these adaptogen nervine antidepressant um, those are going to be all the actions that are indicated for the nervous system. But I also wanted to include, um, for most of the plants I've included, many of their other plant actions, just to kind of show you um, the myriad of ways that um, these plants can be applied to the body and um, used. There's just, gosh, so many, um, again, they're just so nuanced and so, um, ah, so amazing. They just do so many amazing things. So I just wanted to give you an idea of how truly how profound um, Tulsi is. Um, yeah, does so much. And yeah, it's such an old plant. It's, um, you know, it's referred to as queen of the herbs and it has over 3000 years of recorded medicinal use. And it's very sacred to Ayurvedic um, practices, um, very important to Hinduism. Um, it's really awesome for rebuilding the body when you're just like completely burnt out. Um, it's great for chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, I like this one. It's great for when you didn't sleep that much, but you still have to be nice to people the next day. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're just someone that's, you know, sleep is a big piece for you that you're working on, um, Tulsi might be a nice plant to reach for. Um, so going back to that, um, the energetics of Tulsi, we're going to remember that at some times it's going to be warming. So it's, it's warming um, pre-digestion. So that means that it's going to um, help move along stagnation. Um, general stagnation in the body, but um, specifically with Tulsi, the thing I really love about it is it helps clear um, stagnation that <clears throat> exists in the brain. So if you're someone, when you get stressed out, um, you just, oh my gosh, you go to the kitchen and you have a, had a specific reason you were going in there to get something and then you get there and you have no idea um, what, you, what your intention was. Um, Tulsi can kind of help just clear that brain fog and just, yeah, just support your, your mental cognition. Okay, yeah, and it balances cortisol levels. So again, those are our stress hormones. So it's gonna balance those hormones, <clears throat> those stress hormones and support the adrenal glands. 
It's very useful um, for chronic stress and PTSD. And this is one of my favorite things about Tulsi. It um, interferes directly with the hypothalamus to heal patterns of inherited stress or ancestral trauma. And this is a really interesting one to think about. Um, I think kind of a buzzword we might all be tuned into um, nowadays is uh, the word epigenetics. And it's just this idea that there are stress patterns that we've inherited um, through our DNA um, that really potentially aren't ours to hold <laughs> any longer. And it might be really useful for us if we can let those go. And um, Tulsi is a plant that physically uh, and energetically interfaces with your brain and your hypothalamus specifically to help make that possible. So that's pretty magical in my opinion. Um, yeah, and total goddess plant, I love that. Um, it's great for if you're experiencing um, perimenopause or menopause symptoms, and if those symptoms are specifically really stressing you out, Tulsi can be a great plant to reach for. Um, it makes, I think the best way to take it is, is as a tea, um, but here are some other ways that are nice. Um, and then I will say, um, Tulsi is contraindicated with pregnancy. I might be being a bit conservative here with that recommendation, but I personally think it's better to be safe. Um, my feeling is that it, because it has such a dynamic uh, relationship with the endocrine system, um, and it's because it's really working with your hormones, it just might be a plant um, to avoid if you were pregnant. Okay, and here's a really easy recipe for Tulsi infused honey. I love making Tulsi infused honey. It's so easy. I'll let you um, look over this in your own time. Um, I know it's great by the spoonful. It also makes a really nice mask. Uh, if you wanted to just have a total self-care evening um, and do a little face mask and make a little Tulsi tea and add a little Tulsi honey to your tea, um, that would be a really, really lovely thing for you to do. Okay, moving on to lemon balm. So lemon balm was the next plant in your tea blend. Um, oh, I love lemon balm so much. It's so relaxing. It's such a beautiful one um, to call on if you are someone when you get stressed, if you kind of, your default is going into that type A, hyper focused on achievement, um, stiff and rigid, uh, energetic in your body. You know, if you get stressed and you just immediately go to that to-do list, um, or, you know, try to accomplish something really huge. Um, yeah, lemon balm just helps you chill out and just be in your body and just kind of take away those, um, self-imposed pressures that we can also often put on ourselves. Um, yeah, and then again, this is uh, looking at the energetics of lemon balm. So just like Tulsi, it's going to be cooling post-digestion and warming pre-digestion. And in the, while we look at the plant actions here, an action I want to call your attention to is carminative. Um, so Essentially, a carminative is a plant that um, supports digestion. It um, supports like bloating and gas and just other, other ailments that might stem from the GI. Um, a carminative is really helpful for that. And basically, this is cooling post-digestion and warming pre-digestion is essentially um, describing what a carminative does in the body. Now, the link I just want you all to connect with here is that when there's a plant that is a nervine, so a plant that supports the nervous system, and also a carminative, a plant that supports the GI, um, you can bet like 100% of the time that this is going to be a really amazing plant for folks who hold stress in their stomach. 
So if you are someone who, when you get stressed, when you feel anxious, um, if your GI just gets wacky. So if you, you know, get diarrhea when you get stressed out or opposite end, if you have trouble going to the bathroom um, when you're stressed, um, if things just feel kind of stagnant, um, yeah, lemon balm is a great one to work with. If you get, feel butterflies in your stomach, all, all, of, all of the things that can kind of feel wacky in our GI, um, and if those things are connected to stress, uh, lemon balm is a great one to call on. And it's also really beautiful for the heart. So it's a great one um, if you get stressed out and you have heart palpitations, uh, if you feel that stress in your heart, if your heart actually begins to race a little bit when you feel stressed out, um, lemon balm is gonna be a really beautiful one to call on. Yeah, and then in, in that same vein, it's beautiful for heart aches. So if you, oh, I just know there's so much grief right now. So if you're experiencing any of that in your sweet heart, um, lemon balm is a, a really beautiful plant to call on. And then this is kind of cool. So lemon balm brings light to the spirit and specifically it brings the light of the moon. I learned this from a really incredible um, herbalist I studied with, uh, Rylan Sian. And yeah, this is just, I've seen this time and time again. For folks who they feel depressed, they feel their spirit does feel weighted down and heavy, um, but they don't identify with that super bright solar energy. So, you know, we talked about St. John's wort and chamomile as plants that really hold that light of the sun. For someone that doesn't identify with that light, you know, maybe they're a night owl. Um, maybe they, yeah, their, their disposition just really isn't sunny. You know, I'm kind of picturing like the classic Eeyore <laughs> type personality. Um, you know, that person potentially is not really going to identify with that super, super bright, um, chamomile or St. John's or sunflower or something like that. So lemon balm is a beautiful plant to reach for if that is resonating with you. Um, it's just, it brings, it lifts your spirits and really does um, take that weight away from your gut and your heart, really creates some space and expansiveness in those areas. Um, but it's not that overwhelming, like bright solar um, you know, happy time energy. And yeah, again, it's um, connected to the moon. Uh, it's great for insomnia and specifically insomnia that's caused by grief and sadness. And lemon balm is very safe. It's great for elders. It's great for children. Um, it's really good for ADHD or reoccur reoccurring nightmares, um, both in children and adults. Um, I love lemon balm as a tea, and um, clinically, I see this again and again. If someone is just deeply burnt out, um, drinking like a quart of lemon balm a day, so that would be about three to four cups um, of lemon balm a day, that can just be so restorative um, and really, really supportive to the nervous system. And then one thing we just have to keep an eye on is it's cooling to the thyroid. So if you are someone who is on um, any thyroid medication, if you identify as having um, Hashimoto's or hypothyroid, or yeah, if you just are experiencing symptoms um, that potentially is creating a curiosity around, you know, hey, what's going on with my thyroid? Is something up there? Um, you might just want to stay away from lemon balm until you really know um, exactly what's going on there. And then there's so many ways to enjoy lemon balm. Tea, again, is going to be probably my favorite way, um, but it makes a great tincture, which is an alcohol extraction. Uh, it makes a beautiful glycerate, um, and glycerate is a plant-based sugar. So this is a, a really great extraction if you're someone who is avoiding alcohol or if you are you know, wanting to make a medicine for your kids, maybe glycerate would be a nice one to call on. And it makes a great hydrosol. That's just 
Um, if you were making a, an essential oil, hydrosol would be the, the byproduct of that. So it's kind of all, all the leftover water that has, um, you know, some of the floral essential oils in it. And it's a really, really beautiful way to engage with the medicine. Okay, and here's a recipe you can go back to in your own time um, for a glycerate, very easy to make. I'll let you explore that on your own. Okay, milky oats. So the next um, plant in your tea blend was oat straw. And milky oats is just a different part of the plant. Um, oat straw and milky oats come from um, a vena sativa, which is just like wild oats. You can see here, I'm sure we've all seen them. Um, but I wanted to specifically talk about this milky oat um, part of the plant because it's so, so supportive to the nervous system. Um, milky oats are these pods right here. Um, so basically, if when they're in season, um, and I think on the East Coast, it would be like early to midsummer, um, these get full of this really milky latex that you can pop out of each of the pods. It's really fun to do. And um, so that's the milky oats. The oat straw is going to be basically when, when these aren't in um, season. So it's all the dried aerial above ground parts of the plant. That's going to be the oat straw. And then the milky oats is when these are ripe, when they have those, that milky latex in there. And the milky pods, um, they're so special. They actually repair the frayed, um, sorry, in the, so at the end of nerve endings, we have um, something called the myelin sheath. And this just covers all our nerve endings. It kind of protects them. And when we've experienced chronic stress, um, chronic drug and alcohol use, poor diet, you know, if we're kind of having more of an, an inflammatory diet, um, if we have autoimmune imbalances, epilepsy, MS, these are all ways that um, this myelin sheath uh, begins to kind of deteriorate and then our nerve endings become frayed. So milky oats um, comes in there and just repairs the myelin sheath of those nerve endings. It's so, so beautiful. And there's one other plant that does this that I know of, um, which is called skullcap. Um, and if you're wanting this remedy, you, the only way you can get this medicine, this um, coating the myelin sheath medicine, is gonna be from a fresh um, plant tincture. So both the milky oats fresh plant tincture or the skull cap fresh plant tincture. These are the two um, ways that you can really get that medicine. And yeah, it's just profoundly amazing for um, feelings of deep burnout, um, for folks struggling with addiction. Um, but then oat straw, I just wanted to mention, is a really mineral rich um, herb that is also very nourishing to the nervous system. Um, and it pairs really great with other very mineral rich herbs like nettle or red raspberry. Um, and if you wanted to begin drinking infusions, which is like a very long um, steeping of a tea, if you decide to embrace um, herbal infusions and mineral rich herbal infusions, that is, I think, one of the best things you can do for your nervous system. And oat straw is going to be an ingredient that should always be in there. It's such a good one. So that's milky oats. And my goodness, I'm seeing that we're running out of time, but I just wanted to show you a couple more things and then we'll transition into questions for the last maybe six minutes or so. Um, okay, chamomile, I could not talk about chamomile. Um, such a beautiful one. Again, it's that carminative and nerving. So you can guess that it's gonna be great for folks who hold stress in their stomachs. Um, but the thing I wanted to tell you about chamomile is um, making a cold infusion. So that's using cold water instead of hot water over chamomile. 
And, you know, this doesn't have to be fancy. This could be um, you getting a box of chamomile at the store and using maybe three or four tea bags um, and just, you know, putting that in a mason jar, covering with cold water, um, letting sit on the counter overnight for eight to 10 hours and then straining out and drinking in the morning. Um, this is going to bring out more of the anti-anxiety and antidepressant qualities of chamomile. Whereas if you make a cup of hot tea of chamomile, that's something you, you want to do more like before you go to bed, because that's going to support, um, that's going to calm the GI and support sleep. Um, so this is, yeah, just a, a fun um, bit of information about chamomile that I, I feel like a lot of folks don't know. Um, just trying a cold infusion is total game changer. Um, and I feel like if you're starting your day out with a chamomile cold infusion, um, it's just such a beautiful way to get you into that parasympathetic state uh, right away. Um, so, you know, you're starting out your day nice and calm. Okay, and then this is a great recipe, and I'm just going to zoom through um, a bunch of different slides just to get to oh, this one. Okay, we're going to end on this um, ultimate nervous system support recommendations. I'll let you read this in your own time, but um, I did just want to quickly mention um, Protein in the morning um, is another way that you immediately go into the parasympathetic state, which is so important. And then oiling the body, so inside and out. Um, someone once described this to me as um, kind of the same concept as like bumper cars. <laughs> so if you can picture um, kind of walking around in the world and all these stressful uh, things are coming at you and your stress responses are just going haywire, um, Oiling the body just kind of creates this little buffer. So um, things just kind of bounce off of you a bit, a bit softer. So it's not as penetrating um, as, as it can be. So yeah, picking any kind of oil, um, this could be kitchen oil, you know, olive oil, um, coconut oil, any, anything you have lying around um, and oiling the entire body on the outside and then eating really nice fatty oils like avocados or nut butters. Um, it can just be so beneficial to your nervous system. And then when you're oiling, oh my goodness, don't forget your ears. This is one of the most common things you can do for your body. Um, if we leave you with homework for tonight <laughs> um, after class, this would be what I would recommend. Like right before bed, just getting a little oil and maybe spending three to five minutes um, oiling your ears. It's so calming, really, really nice. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out of here and we can get into some questions, but I did just wanna show you um, at the very end of this presentation, there's um, a list to source herbs. Um, these are some of my favorite organic farms. And then also my contact information. So if there's a question that we didn't get to or, you know, you, you just want to dive deeper um, about a particular plant, I'm so here for that. And um, yeah, that it would be an honor. That's, I love talking about plants. Um, okay, that was a lot. Um, here we are with a few minutes left. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Thank you good thank you yeah. everybody doing okay yeah, doing great thank you yes thank you well, thank you for the tea i'm enjoying it oh good yes. i'm so glad i'm gonna take a sip <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um so there were a couple questions um one of them was asking about the slides the slides will be available um some of you came on a little bit um after we started the slides will be emailed to you probably tomorrow morning um or actually wednesday when i'm back when I'm back at work, I'll send along a survey and um, the slides. Thanks for doing and that, Eric. Other question, yeah, of course you're welcome. Um, the other question is, um, where do you order the herbs from the previous slide? I don't remember, I think that might've been the Tulsi slide, but you um, left those links at the farms at the end, right? That yes. those were where you would recommend? Yeah, though, you know, and I, I will say that um, 
I am, I've just moved from the West Coast. I'm kind of more connected to West Coast farms. Um, there, I left um, one East Coast farm on there, but I'm sure there's an amazing organic farm in Mystic and I just don't know about it. So <laughs> I would encourage you to do some digging and try to support your local farmer if you can. Um, but those are, the ones I listed are really wonderful, um, organic and like beautiful people to support, so. Does anybody have other questions? Um, I was just gonna quickly ask if, where you recommend people find information about um, herbal medicine. Is there anything online that you would recommend in particular, like sources? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, oh my goodness, it feels like there's so much. Um, one place I would suggest starting is um, an organization called the Herbal Academy. Um, and the American Herbalist Guild. Those are um, some, yeah, just really great that you're, there's gonna be, you know, list of classes that you can take and so many blog posts and um, different topics that they cover. So yeah, that, that would probably be a good starting place. Awesome. And then um, someone has asked if you custom make blends for people. I do, yeah. Thanks for asking, Gail. Um, yeah, I do. So I have a um, few different ways that I do that. I either work one-on-one um, -on -one with folks in my clinical practice. So that's kind of really zooming out and taking a holistic approach to what's going on um, through a really detailed intake process and then coming up with formu a formula and different blends that support kind of the whole body. Um, so that's one way. And then the next way is I started doing custom stress and anxiety blends specifically. And how I do that is just through um, a pretty detailed um, questionnaire on our website that kind of just asks, um, yeah, specific questions about your stress and anxiety that you're experiencing and just gives me a little more information about what's going on and gives you a chance to express anything that feels important. And then I'll make a blend that's specifically for stress and anxiety. Yeah. Um, and Erica's asked about um, EMFs and blue light under the stress management side, just more information about. Yeah, yeah. so EMFs, so that would be electromagnetic fields. Am I remembering that correctly? Um, and blue light is going to be, so basically every... Uh, so your presentation of this by this herbalist is about like stress and anxiety reduction, like through oh. like remedies. <laughs> He's a little, no. that's pretty neat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, every, um, yeah. every device that you have, every computer, um, you know, anything electronic basically that you're working with is, is or that's in your house is going to be shooting off these EMFs. Um, and if you're interfacing directly with them, like on a computer or a phone, that's going to be giving you um, blue light. So those can just be really harmful to the body. And there's ways that we can protect ourselves from that. Um, EMFs uh, specifically, there's just, um, yeah, different protocols you can do just to support your body, um, releasing toxins, uh, supporting the liver. And then there's also, and of course, again, um, EMFs are gonna cause inflammation in the body. So it's looping back to that inflammation piece. When inflammation is high, then our cortisol levels are high. So just anything, Inflammation is um, caused by so many things, um, but specifically with EMFs, um, yeah, just trying to keep keep our systems of elimination working the best we can is a nice way to combat combat that. And then there's also like um, crystals, and <laughs> which I'm not that familiar with, but I think there's different um, uh, 
uh, like physical objects you can buy for your house that kind of deflect the EMFs. Um, I'm not the, I don't 100% know about, about that one, but I'd be down to do more research and get back to you about that specifically. But blue lights, um, they can really mess with your like sleep patterns. That's kind of the major thing. So making sure, you know, you have a bedtime ritual that doesn't involve um, staring at your phone for a half hour before bed or, or watching a movie um, for, you know, a few hours before bed or something, but trying instead to maybe go for a book or, yeah, just getting away from those blue lights or getting um, blue light canceling glasses. Um, those are pretty, you could order those probably pretty easy, easily and inexpensively. And um, yeah, that's what I know about those. 